Hey everybody and welcome to Outdoor Adventures. Today we're going to be talking about setting up your hammock and dialing it in. Now what we're not going to be talking about is setting up your tarp. I have a previous video all about setting up tarps and I think that would be substantial without making this video too long where it kind of gets boring going over the same repetitive things. The first thing we want to do before we even start talking about hammocks is we want to look up. And we want to look up to find if there's any problem areas, some things like dead branches, widow makers, or even dead trees that could potentially fall on us while we're sleeping. Now, tent camping is the same thing. You do the same exact thing. You make sure there's no dangerous obstacles around you, and then you just set up. With hammocks, you have to be a little more careful because you are obviously attached to two trees. And if one of those trees has a widow maker above it, it's coming right down on you. We want to make sure that we're looking up and we don't see any dangerous things above us that will potentially fall on us in the middle of the night. Now this looks like a pretty secluded spot. There are some down trees on the other side of the camera that we don't have to worry about because they're already down, but this spot looks pretty good. So we're gonna try to set up here. Most backpackers are gonna be carrying trekking poles already. These are actually a great tool to determine if the distance between the two trees that you're potentially gonna hang from are the correct distance apart. And what I do is I just stretch out my arms and if the trekking pole tips don't touch the trees for a 10 foot hammock, which is what I like to sleep in, it's perfect. Now, if you have an 11 foot hammock, obviously adjust your poles as necessary. But usually if you're a taller person and have an 11 foot hammock, your poles will be longer than mine, me being at five six. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up on this tree and this tree, now I know I've used these trees in the past, I know that they're the perfect size, but let's just kind of pretend that I don't know if they're spaced correctly. So we're just gonna walk up to the trees, stretch out our arms, and if the trekking pole isn't touching either one of the trees, then that's a perfect spot for me. So let's get set up here. So today I just have a netless 10 foot basic hammock. It's a war bonnet traveler. Usually I use this for winter camping just because it's simple and easy to set up and I don't really need the bug net in colder temperatures. Also, it's gonna allow you to see how to put your under quilt on and adjust it accordingly. So we're gonna talk about that. Today I am also using, instead of a carabiner, which we've talked about before, I'm using a Dutchware Dutch clip. And what that does, it just simply takes the place of a carabiner, wrap it around a tree, and just kind of hook it in. It works out really well too. And it allows for very fast setup. So let's get this hammock attached. So for this hammock and these trees, since they are pretty close to the edges of the trekking poles when I held them out, I wanna set it up a little bit above eye height. Now I'm 5'6", so you can adjust accordingly. We're just taking it around the tree. We're just clipping it in. Don't be too worried if you think you're going to be low. We can always adjust it after we hang up the hammock. So I want to point out a mistake that I think a lot of newbies make when they set up their first hammock. Take note of the length of the webbing on this side of the tree versus the length of the webbing on this side of the tree. What we want to do to ensure maximum comfort here is we wanna make it centered between the two trees. We don't wanna have a longer portion and a shorter portion of webbing. We wanna have them ex pretty much exactly the same. So let me fix this and we'll move on. Okay, and that looks about right. Now, what I really like to do is I like to take my foot end and raise it up about six inches higher than my head end. What this does is it stops you from sliding kind of down the hill of your hammock, down the angle of your hammock. And so I'll just take my strap up just about six inches and we will lower the head end just a little bit with the buckle. So you can see how we're kind of going a little bit uphill. There's a couple ways to tell that you have a good angle coming down from the trees. 
what you don't want to do is set it up really, really high and then have a sharp angle down to your hammock. It's just going to put too much stress on the ridge line, which is meant to keep the angle of the hammock. And it also is going to make it feel really, really tight inside the hammock, which is what we don't want. We want to be, uh, we want to have a nice, comfortable hang. So what we can do is we can take our fingers like this with the thumb and the forefinger, the forefinger is parallel to the ground. And if these two fingers touch the strap without kind of making any weird movements on it, then we know we got our right angle. So as you can see, this is pretty much perfect right now. The second thing that we can do is we can get in our hammock before we set up anything else. So don't set up your under quilt, don't set up anything else just yet. And what we can do is we can lay in it, mock lay in it, and we can test that we can bend this ridge line a little less than 90 degrees. If it's really, really tight, it means you need to adjust your hammock a little bit better. Your angle is too steep or too, um, too short. So we can see that we have the ability to bend the ridge line, which is exactly what we want. What we don't want is we don't want it really taut like a guitar string. That's not what we want. That means there's something wrong with your webbing angles and you need, you should, you don't need to, but you should fix it. So this is pretty good and we will go from there. Now, if it's not to your liking as far as maybe it's too high up in the air, uh, you can you know raise or lower your hammock as you see fit. What I kind of like is whenever I get into my hammock, I like being able to, you know, feels like you're sitting in a chair. So your legs aren't dangling off like a bar stool, but you're actually sitting down in a chair and it should be pretty comfortable from there. Only hang as high as you're willing to fall. Always remember that. So for ideal conditions where it's not raining or snowing or there's no chance of your hammock or anything getting wet, I highly suggest you set up your hammock first and then your tarp. Now, if it is raining, I do have a how to set up your hammock in the rain video already made. I'll flash it on the screen right now. So check up in those suggested videos. Basically what you do is you set up your tarp first, keep everything dry under your tarp, and then you set up your hammock the same exact way. But it is a lot easier to set up your hammock first when you don't have to worry about the rain. But obviously this will happen to you at some point if you decide to go backpacking. So after we've gotten our hammock all set up just the way we like it, we're gonna be ready to put our insulation on the hammock or in the hammock, depending on which way you're going. Now I'm gonna show people how to put your pad in your hammock first, and then we'll talk about under quilts. So for those coming from a tent setup or you know just sleeping on the ground under a tarp, we're gonna be using an inflatable pad. Now there are other options that we already talked about before as far as kind of making a, a cheaper pad if you don't wanna use it and something a little bit more comfortable in my opinion called Reflectix, uh, which will get you down to, I don't know, probably around 50, maybe even 40 degrees comfortably. And you really don't need anything else other than that. But for any colder temperatures, or if you just have a pad laying around and you don't want to deal with making your own pad for your hammock, you can just simply use what you used in your tent setup. Now this is a Neo Air X Therm. It's a pretty thick pad. And what we're just going to do is we're going to toss it in the hammock here and blow it up. Okay, so we got the pad in there. We're going to kind of position it like we want to lay with an emphasis on keeping the head at the bottom part of the hammock and the feet kind of just sprawled out in the air because that's, that's kind of how we're going to end up at the end of this and you'll see in a second here. So position it first and then try to hold it down and get in so it doesn't move. Now it has a tendency to just kind of want to be right in the middle all the time. Okay, so getting in, we want to push ourselves down so we're still kind of flat. Now your pad might hang off the edge like this one. It's perfectly all right, it's fine. Try to keep it in there if you can. And I need to move down more still. So this is what it's gonna be like. Now this is way over inflated. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna take a lot more air out of this thing. Cause that's way too much. You wanna take as much air out so you can almost feel your butt hit the bottom of the hammock. We were talking about hammocks with double layers. These are great if you want to stay with the pad, if you don't think you're ever going to go with an underquilt or you know, you're a heavier person and need that extra weight support. 
because the pad kind of slips in between the hammock layers and kind of stays in place when there's weight on the first layer. But we, you, as you can see, with some adjusting, you can definitely make this work. Now, I would still suggest a pillow because you're kind of losing the, uh, uh, the length of the hammock pad. So if you're a taller person and the hammock pad is just big enough where you know, it, it's like exactly the, your size, then um, you want a pillow behind your head because it kind of accordions down, at least for a, uh, a blow up pad. But this is what we're gonna do. And it's the same way with the closed cell foam pad or the Reflectix like I was talking about before. Now, eventually you're going to want more than likely to switch to a more comfortable option, which is an underquilt, which we talked about last video. So let me show you a couple things on that and how to set them up. Actually, this is semi-comfortable right now. <laughs> Could definitely take a nap. So here we have our full length underquilt and then I'll show you a three quarter length underquilt. So usually you put some S beaners. They're just like kind of double sided carabiners put it on the, the, uh, the shock cord that usually comes with the underquilt. And what I like to do, there's many ways to do it. I just like to clip it to the, where the cinch buckles or the whoopee slings are, you know, your suspension system. And that seems to work out well for me. And from here, you can drag it underneath and clip it again. Now, what I like to do on backpacking trips is the first night I like to dial it down and usually you don't have to touch any kind of you know, load lifters or shock cord adjustments the entire trip. And it works out really, really well because once you get it adjusted, you don't have to adjust it again. Okay, so we have our full length under quilt attached to the suspension of the hammock and you can see that it's kind of just hanging down to the ground. So we need, obviously need to make some adjustments. So. You wanna take note of where your feet kinda of land in the hammock and kinda of center it to that point. Now you don't need as much insulation down at your head end as you usually do with your foot end. So we're gonna keep that in mind. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten the load lifters, which are these first clips that are actually attached to the S beaner. And what I like to do is I like to have more coverage at my feet in the direction that I'm laying. So if my feet are facing this end of the hammock, I wanna pull this up, this one adjustment up more than the other side right here. So I'm just gonna do it a little bit here. So we have a under quilt that is kind of like this, if you guys can imagine that or see that. So see how the under quilt is like this way toward the tree? That's what we want, at least that's what works for me. Everybody does it differently. I'm just giving you the tips that I've learned over the years of hammock camping. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the head end, but in reverse. So where my head is, we want the opposite end up near the tree. Now we're just taking it and dragging it up and taking this side and not dragging it up as far. So we kind of have a quilt that looks like this now. Second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the tension of the shock cord that closes the ends of the underquilt in. And that's gonna keep all your insulation in. With these, you don't really need to think, just pull them tight. It's really, really simple. Okay, and that is our underquilt on our hammock. Okay, we'll get in. Now, when you do this, make sure you're sitting on the hammock fabric instead of the underquilt fabric because you will fall straight through and more than likely ruin your underquilt. I, what I usually do is I kick my shoes off, which I'm not gonna do because it's a really cold day today. But what I'm looking for is I'm looking for any kind of issues with warmth. And you wanna really wrap that under quilt around you. Okay, so I'm feeling that shock cord adjustment I made to kind of lock it down together with the hammock, not the load lifters, but the shock cord around my head. And it seems pretty much set. Now I'm a short person, so I always, for a full length under quilt, 
I always just end up staying inside the under quilt. If you're a larger person, if you're a taller person, what you do is you focus more of the under quilt on your feet rather than your head because with your head you're gonna maybe have a pillow or some kind of hat on and that'll be perfectly fine to keep your head warm. So you don't need to put your head in the under quilt, especially if you're a taller person, but focus and put emphasis on making sure that your feet are entirely covered, which they are. There, you can see that they're completely covered. Okay, with a three quarter length under quilt, they usually have a dedicated head end and a dedicated foot end. So you need to make sure. Obviously the shoulders are wider than the foot end. So this is how we're gonna do it. Attach it. Put it under and attach it to the other side of your suspension. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it under our hammock, get our hammock inside. Now, for a three quarter length under quilt, just don't overthink this. What you want is you want this wrapped up around your shoulders and you want this, depending on your height, probably right underneath your calves or your knees, depending on where you fall. So you can move it back and forth and we are just gonna make sure the bottom part where our head is gonna be is just outside of the suspension of the under quilt. So we're gonna raise this up a little bit the same exact way, a little off center because we want our head, our shoulders and protected. And then we're gonna really, really lock this thing up. I like to keep this really, really tight and more focused again on the foot end compared to just having it even. All right, second, we're going to take the adjustment that keeps all the drafts out. We're just gonna tighten them down again. I'm locking the head end of the under quilt down with the, to keep the drafts out, just like I did on the full length under quilt. For the foot end, do it about half the distance that you would have on the full length under quilt. And the reason being, if you tighten it up too much, you may have some discomfort underneath your knees and that's definitely not what you want. Your knees are gonna push the under quilt down, especially on this end of the hammock. Keep an emphasis again on doing this with your under quilt. So you want this side closer to the tree than the other side, the side that your foot's gonna be either right or left depending on your hammock lay. All right, so let's get into this one and we'll see if we dialed everything down correctly. You'll notice that my feet are kind of sticking out with this one. On most model hammocks, it really depends on your model. This is what I like to do. I like to keep the shock cord right above my feet. This is where the bug net would pretty much be. And that works perfect, especially on this model. And I am warm. Now, if your feet start to get a little cold, um, this usually happens right around the 60 degree mark for me. What I'll do is I'll just simply put my sit pad under my feet and it acts as that insulation. Same way a closed cell foam pad would work on your entire body, either on the ground or in the hammock. And that is just perfect. So hammock setup and insulation is just one of those things that you're really, really gonna have to just play around with. And I highly recommend you play around with it at your house. Don't wait till you get out on a trip to realize that, oh man, I don't know how to set up my hammock. Make sure you do it at your house. Go to a local park, go to a state park, do it on a day hike, do anything you can, but make sure you know how to set up your hammock and everything before you go out backpacking because it is a terrible idea to learn out in the field when you are needing to set up for the night. A couple tips that I wanted to give you before we ended this series. And I appreciate everyone coming along for the series. I think it was really great. I got a lot of positive comments on the channel. If you <laughs> wake up in the middle of the night and you feel all this, this dirt behind your back, what you do, <laughs> and it's just, it's literally just dirt coming off of your body, mostly your legs. And what you can do to get that out, because it, it's sometimes, man, it drives me crazy. I know any hammock camper knows exactly what I'm talking about here. But what you can do is instead of just trying to push it out with your hand, it's never gonna work. It, it doesn't work like that. You usually have to just get out, turn your hammock inside out and shake it out and get in. Well, I found a way that you don't have to do that. I'm not sure a lot of people know this, but if you take your buff off or 
a sock or whatever and just put it behind you, all that dirt will come off. It kind of acts like a, almost like a little broom, a little squeegee, if you will. So you just get all that dirt and grime out of your hammock without having to get up and lose your insulation and get cold again. So that's my tip on that. Second tip, if you think that it's gonna rain, set up your tarp a little lower to your ridgeline almost to the point where the top of the tarp is actually touching your ridgeline. And reason being, when you get in your hammock, your ridgeline is gonna go down. It's gonna move under the tarp a little bit. So you'll still have ample room, but it'll definitely save you a trip outside of your hammock in the middle of the night if it does decide to rain while you're sleeping. And I'll tell you what, being in a couple thunderstorms over the years, it's the most miserable thing to be nice and warm and cozy while it's raining outside and then having the wind blow the rain inside your hammock because the tarp is too high. You just don't want to get up to do it. That's what I highly recommend. I also really recommend that you play around with suspensions. Find something that you like. If a loop suspension works for you, by all means use it. If uh, you know carabiner and a cinch buckle and webbing works, use it. You know, Make sure you go through all of the suspensions because you might be surprised what you actually like. For me over the years I've tried pretty much everything at this point and I always seem to go back to cinch buckles and they just work for me. It's, it's just my preference and what works for me is not necessarily going to work for you but that's just what I keep coming back to. So everybody, I just wanted to say thank you for watching my beginner hammock camping series. It was a lot of fun to film and I really, really did enjoy putting this information out there. Be sure to do your own research, not just take my word for it. There may be some things that I missed. I highly, highly recommend you purchase the book that I mentioned at the beginning of the series called The Ultimate Hang by Derek Henson. The book is absolutely amazing and like I said, even after a couple years of hammock camping, I read that book and I still learned some things. So thank you guys. That was Beginner Hammock Camping. I'm Frozen with Outdoor Adventures. And I'll see you on the trail. We want to curve this bump in the camera. Oops. Ah, oh, come on. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. So what we're going to do is we're going to, whoa! Well, at least I have a blooper now, right?